sexually transmitted diseases, what is new? There is actually, there is actually new things. So the new things are not the presentations. The new thing is not like I got a new presentation of cellulitis or I got a new presentation of cellulitis of my urethra. The new thing is not that it gives you frequency urgency burning dysuria, frequency urgency burning dysuria, frequency urgency burning dysuria, but that's what cystitis does too, right? So how are you going to tell whether it's dysuria from urethritis or dysuria from cystitis? Answering the question, what's the most likely diagnosis? And I want to answer it and I'm looking for urethritis and they both give frequency urgency burning dysuria. What's different about urethritis is that urethritis will give you discharge, vomiting from the head of the penis, penile sputum. Pah, yuck. And so that's one of the differences between cystitis, but that's not new. Ceftriaxone in a single dose for gonorrhea, that's not new. Azithromycin in a single dose was that way 30 years ago. That's not new. We knew azithromycin was safe in pregnancy 30 years ago. We knew doxycycline had equal efficacy, but who would want to take doxycycline for a week when you could take one dose of azithromycin? Here's what's new. The best initial test for your urethritis is a voided urine sample. Most people who are going to get this question are going to say, put a swab in the penis. And if you've ever done this, and you've ever seen the reaction, it sort of looks like this. Yo! Don't touch me with that swab! That's what putting the swab in the penis is. Because the swab in the penis is like trying to take an eyeball culture from a cyclops. He'll... With conjunctivitis. So... Here, you just void the urine. No more gram stains. That's going to be taken out of all the bucks because gram stain is complicated. Swabbing that thing and wiping it on a slide. First of all, it does not catch chlamydia. Second of all, it doesn't detect a bunch of gonorrhea even when it's there. So a swab with a gram stain showing intracellular diplococci is very specific. But the problem with it is it's technically difficult and too many false negatives. Now, in hepatitis, we called it PCR for DNA for Hep B, PCR for hepatitis C for RNA, same with HIV. Here it's called nucleic acid amplification testing. It's pretty much the same concept as saying a PCR. And also, in some places you may see the term DNA probe. So whether it's called DNA probe, PCR, nucleic acid amplification, one test in avoided urine, and that's a huge increase, a huge advance. Now the other causes are mycoplasma genitalium and ureoplasma, but since that mycoplasma and the ureoplasma both get treated with azithromycin and doxycycline, doesn't really matter. So the, not having to do a swab does matter, also because you have one test that will find both diseases. The treatment is a single dose of ceftriaxone, a single dose of azithromycin, doxycycline is equivalent, and here's the other thing is that gon uh, gonorrhea used to be able to be treated with cefixime. Cefixime is a oral third generation cephalosporin, but it does not fix him. The fix him doesn't fix him. Ah, I made it funny. Quinolones have too much resistance, so they're not alternatives that are good. And cefixime and quinolones are only if there was some circumstance in which you did not possibly have intramuscular ceftriaxone. Do you mean to say that there's really no really good alternative for intramuscular ceftriaxone? Yeah, I'm saying that. Now, cervicitis. Cervicitis has discharge. Cervicitis can have some cervical motion tenderness. Cervicitis can have some dyspareunia. Cervicitis has discharge. On exam, is strawberry cervix. That's not new. So what's new about cervicitis? Very important. We have something really new. It's really big. So let's say that one of these days that we're in a live class, because we do live classes, and it's the last day of class, and you want your picture with the really important book author, me, and there's no one there to take a picture of us. But you have your cell phone, and you want a picture, and nobody to take a picture. What would they do? What would you do? You would take the cell phone, and you would do a selfie, right? Selfie. So cervicitis, what's the diagnostic test? Don't need a speculum. What's the diagnostic test? Don't need a doctor. Don't need a spe speculum. Don't need stirrups. What do you do? A selfie. Self-administered swab. And nucleic acid amplification test will find both gonorrhea and chlamydia. And a single dose of cetraxin and a single dose of azithromycin. Everything I just said on treatment for urethritis. This is a colossal advance. So if you said to me, 
Fishy, fishy. Just, I'll tell you what, give me the STD section and just tell me what I'm not going to know. The voided urine for the man for urethritis, the self-administered wab for cervicitis. For pelvic inflammatory disease, exclude pregnancy first. Laparoscopy is the most accurate test, even though you're not going to do it. For primary syphilis, don't desensitize primary syphilis. If you're, if you're penicillin allergic, use doxycycline. That's it. For genital warts, genital warts, imiquimod is an immunostimulant that also gets rid of basal cell cancer and the pre-squamous cell cancer called actinic keratosis. Wow, a topical immunostimulant that gets rid of skin cancer, yeah, wow. And that's basically what's new about the STD section, not much else. So you treat cervicitis and you treat urethritis a single dose. Cefixim is not uh, good enough. Doxycycline is uh, equal in efficacy, but harder to use because you have to use it for a week. Epididymitis, how are you gonna tell this apart from testicular torsion? Testicular torsion, orchitis, how are you gonna tell them apart from testicular torsion? They're both painful testicles, okay. How are you going to tell them apart? Well, they're both painful testicles, torsion. So one of the things that's uh, different about it is that uh, epididymitis doesn't actually change the position of your testicle. See, when you have torsion, torsion brings the testicle. Normally, your testicles horizontal or are they vertical? Are now acting out the testicle. So normally, testicles are, are vertical. And what happens when you have torsion? Torsion it gets twisted up. It goes twist, 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 and it gets pulled up and horizontal. Whereas epididymitis doesn't change the location of the testicle. And also the other thing is point tenderness. Now, uh, torsion is different because it changes how it feels based on whether you lift the testicle or not. Prem sign, isn't it? Lifting the testicle or not. But here it's just point tenderness and epididymitis gets treated in younger people like you would urethritis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia. And in older people, it get, and why soxycycline? Because you can't treat with just a single dose can't treat with just a single dose. Older guys get treated like a UTI with E. coli, so that means they're going to get Bactrim, trimethoprim sulfa, quinolones, trimethoprim sulfa and quinolones uh, uh, for people who have epididymitis. But remember, point tenderness is the key. Older E. coli, younger GC chlamydia. Now, point tenderness is the most characteristic thing, but the elevated testicle in a horizontal approach is torsion. And torsion, which is a surgical emergency, is treated with a change in the surgical realignment. You gotta untwist the testicle before it necroses off. Now, the bag of worms feeling on palpation. Worse when standing. If what's varicose veins of your testicle, varicose veins of your testicle is a varicocele. Varicose veins, and sometimes, just like varicose veins in the legs, they need to some surgical management, because uh, there's no real management that's medical. Well, uh, keep your uh, stand on your head. So you ligate them the same way that you might sclerose them off or strip them or inject something to dry them out and close them off in the legs. Varicocele, just like varicose veins, doesn't really have any long-term consequences. They're just uncomfortable. What about a hydrocele? What's the meaning of a hydrocele? Nothing. Varicocele can be more discomfort. Hydrocele means a big nothing, just a fluid pimple in the testicles. Lower abdominal tenderness and lower abdominal pain Lower abdominal tenderness and lower abdominal pain, fever. Lower abdominal tenderness and lower abdominal pain, cervical emotional tenderness, you'll never be the same, is PID. You didn't need me for that, that's not anything new. And you know, in PID, we often have to determine who should be admitted to the hospital. Now, PID is a very localized infection, and you're not going to become septic from it. You're not going to develop a hypotension from it. You're not going to develop a metabolic acidosis from this localized infection. And gonorrhea, even when it's disseminated, and you have disseminated septic arthritis, is not the kind of dissemination that causes hypotension and sepsis as you would with E. coli or Klebsiella or staph. So then how do you determine severity for PID to know who should be admitted? Well, one, of course, there's administration things like, ah, I'm vomiting, I can't use oral medications. Uh, I don't have pills, I'm non-compliant. Uh, there's other things where you just want more control, like pregnancy. 
But in ter determining severity, how do you determine severity of an infectious disease that doesn't cause sepsis? And for PID, it is fever and white count. If the fever is high and the white count is really high, fever and a white count. Fever and a white count tell severity, and that's how you know who needs to be admitted. And that, my friends, is the crux of step two for us. Step one, you assimilate has a higher knowledge base, greater knowledge base. You have to not only know that you're giving cefoxetin and doxycycline, cefotetan and doxycycline, but step one says, ooh, doxycyclines, macrolides, I know that they, have to, they work at the ribosome. I have to remember what a 30 and a 50S ribosome is. I have to remember what mRNA does. Oh, it builds amino acids into proteins. I have to know that ceftriaxone ha has binding proteins in the cell wool. There's a much greater knowledge base in step one. The hard part about step two is not that it's a larger knowledge base. The hard about, part about step two is the order in which to do things. So if you had pelvic inflammatory disease, this question of what is the most important thing to do first, second, third, is life-saving. And this is why you're here. I have a person with lower abdominal pain and tenderness, cervical motion tenderness. You have correctly identified pelvic inflammatory disease because that would be a relatively easy question. The next step in management is not a cervical culture. The next step in management is not nucleic acid amplification test and a self-administered swab. The next step in management is not to give the cefoxetin and doxy, cefotetan and doxy. The next step in management for a woman with lower abdominal pain and tenderness is to make sure she's not going to rupture an ectopic pregnancy. So level two, step two. This question that says, what is the next best step in management, must be essentially answered for all of your diseases, so that when you go to test day, you don't kill this person by missing the ectopic. Cervical swab for culture or nucleic acid amplification tests are important, but not as important as the HCG. The most accurate test for PID is a hard question too, because it's not the same thing as saying, what will you do? What would I do? Now, when it says do, does do mean a test or a treatment? Do can be either a test or a treatment, and you're supposed to choose because the most important thing on step two is the order in which to do things. And so when this question says most accurate, most accurate is a laparoscopy. Now, I never said I was going to do a laparoscopy. I don't have to do a laparoscopy because I can just treat. Laparoscopy is the answer when they either say what's the most accurate or the question says you treated their PID and they recurred. You treated the PID and three days later they're still febrile and uncomfortable. You treated the PID and you gave cefroxetin and doxy and they didn't respond. Maybe it's not really PID or maybe there's a resistant organism. Laparoscopy. Laparoscopy is like sinus biopsy for sinusitis. What would I do when I got sinusitis? I'm not going to do a sinus biopsy. I'm going to treat them empirically with augmented amoxicillin clavulonic acid uh, uh, decongestant. Then when is sinus biopsy the answer? I treat them and they don't get better. I switched antibiotics, they didn't get better. They recur, they recur, they're not better. They recur, they recur, they're not better. Laparoscopy, sinus biopsy, and you treat with a gonorrhea drug and a chlamydia drug, but the difference for inpatient and who's severe enough to be inpatient, high white count, high fever, is that what's different about cefoxetin and cefotetan from the other cephalosporins is that they cover anaerobes, which happen in the pelvis. That's why in outpatient therapy, we want to give anaerobic coverage too, particularly if it's severe, because they're covering the pelvis, which has anaerobes in it. Now, what if you had anaphylaxis to penicillin? So I told you that if you just had a rash to penicillins, cephalosporins are perfectly fine, and in 30 years, I've never seen one cross-reaction, not once. But if there's anaphylaxis, levofloxacin, metronidazole, lev quinolones will cover some uh, quinolones. Quinolones actually have chlamydia coverage. 
quinolones will cover the gram negatives, quinolones will have some chlamydia coverage. Or here, you can use gentamicin and clindamycin. Gentamicin, clindamycin, doxycycline, clindamycin will cover anaerobes, gentamicin, the gram negatives, doxycycline will cover the chlamydias. So cervical testing is not the most accurate because gonorrhea or chlamydia on the cervix doesn't mean cervicitis. Gonorrhea or chlamydia on the cervix doesn't mean PID. You could just be asymptomatically carrying it. The most common method of transmission of chlamydia and gonorrhea is an asymptomatic carriage. Gonorrhea and chlamydia get on there into the urethra and more often the cervix because when you have disseminated gonorrhea, the only test that hits 30% sensitivity as a single test is the cervical swab or cervical nucleic acid test. So cervical uh, chlamydia gonorrhea does not mean PID or cervicitis. You could just be asymptomatically carrying it. Ulcerative genital disease. Does gonorrhea cause ulcers? It does not. So ulcerative genital disease is not a, a gonorrhea thing. Can chlamydia cause ulcers? Yes, it can. Lymphogranuloma venereum is chlamydia trachomatis. So all the ulcerative genital, genital diseases, whether it's syphilis, which is painless, or lymphogranuloma venereum, or chancroid, which is a very rare disorder called hemophilus ducreae, painful, all have adenopathy. Uh, herpes lesions where the roofs come off the vesicles, the extraordinarily rare granuloma inguinale where the organism name changes every year, it goes from uh, uh, donovanosis to uh, calamatobacterium granulomatis to klebsiella granulomatis, it changes its name all the time. They all have ulcers and they all have adenopathy. Now, syphilitic chancres can be painful in real life, because you can have the syphilitic chancre getting infected with bacteria. But there's an advantage to a board test, and that is, if they want you to know the answer, they have to tell you something. If they want you to know the answer, they have to let you know. So if I want you to know it's syphilis, dude, it's painless and firm. And if they tell you it's just painful, why is it painful? With chancre, because it's hemophilus du cray. Du cray. Why do I cry? Because it's painful. Tender nodes, more than a tender ulcer. Tender nodes is lymphogranuloma venereum, LGV, okay, buboes, lymphogranuloma venereum from chlamydia. Because it's a chlamydia, it's serology doxycycline. All right, the diagnostic test for a primary syphilitic lesion, for primary syphilitic chancre, whether it's on the penis or the vulva, the best initial, most accurate test, the most accurate test for syphilitic chancre is the dark field. Now, even though you may never have seen it done, and maybe you're never going to see it done, the VDRL and RPR needs time to become positive. That's why it's only got 75% sensitivity. By the time you get to secondary syphilis, the VDRL and RPR have like 99% sensitivity. Okay, you confirm with an FTA. This has not changed for 100 years. The moral of the story is this. If you see a dark field positive, that's the most accurate test because you're actually seeing organisms. Chancroid is Haemophilus ducreae. And since it's a Haemophilus, which is a pleomorphic gram-negative rod Haemophilus, it's either a short rod or a long caucus, depending on how you think about it. Chancroid is a stain in a culture because it's a Haemophilus ducreae. Lymphogranuloma venereum is a chlamydia, so you can either do a blood test or actually do nucleic acid amplification on a uh, puncture, on an aspirate, on a swab, on basically taking a sample out of those lymph nodes, big lymph node. Herpes simplex. Herpes simplex, if they show you vesicles, don't do anything except go to treatment. If it says multiple painful penile vesicles and it says test treatment, just go straight to treatment. But what if you're not certain if it's herpes because the roof comes off of the lesion? The PCR for herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, is more sensitive and more specific than a viral culture. Zank prep is 50 or 60 percent sensitive. Zank prep is multinucleated giant cells. Zank prep is like the um, the India ink for cryptococcus. If it's positive, it's good. If it's negative, it means nothing. Viral culture is not as sensitive at PCR. So if the dark field is positive, you don't have to do anything else because you, there's nothing else but syphilis that makes the dark field that's positive. The treatment for primary syphilis 
okay, is one single dose of intramuscular penicillin. Now, if you are penicillin allergic and you have a syphilitic chancre, if you're penicillin allergic, the next best step for a syphilitic chancre, primary syphilis is not desensitize. Do not desensitize. Raise your hand, repeat after me. Don't desensitize a chancre and a penis. I promise, I promise, I never, I promise never to desensitize, I promise never to desensitize a penis. That's right. Do not desensitize a penis or a vulva. When do you desensitize for syphilis? Tertiary syphilis. Pregnant ladies and neurosyphilis. Pregnant and neurosyphilis desensitize those pregnant ladies. It's hard to be pregnant. They're too sensitive anyway. Chancroid is a hemophilus. One single dose of azithromycin. Lymphogranuloma venerea. It's a chlamydia. Chlamydia is get doxycycline. Why not azithromycin? Because it's too deep an infection to treat with one single dose of azithromycin. Which has greater efficacy? Too easy in a question. Acyclovir, famcyclovir, valacyclovir, acyclovir, famcyclovir, valacyclovir, all equal. Now, if you're acyclovir resistant, the treatment for herpes is foscarnate, because foscarnate does not need activation with thymidine kinase. So foscarnate can act directly, uh, intravenously, no oral version of foscarnate. By the way, if you're acyclovir resistant, Will gancyclovir help? No. If you're acyclovir resistant, gancyclovir won't help because gancyclovir needs activation with thymidine kinase as well. For herpes, the most accurate test is PCR. Ooh. Can PCR tell you whether you're acyclovir resistant? Can PCR tell you if you're acyclovir resistant? It cannot. Only viral culture can tell you if your organism's resistant for herpes. In uh, HIV, we can genotype it. We can look at mutations in the genome of the HIV, and we know that certain genetic mutations in the HIV correspond to resistance at different codons to the different drugs but not so for herpes. There is no genotyping the herpes. You have to physically grow it up. Technically speaking, that would be called phenotyping with a pH, not an F. A woman comes with multiple painful genital vesicles. But what do you do? Multiple genital vesicles. <sighs> what else causes multiple genital vesicles besides herpes? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Nothing. By the way, what's the difference between a vesicle and a bulla? Size. Right now I'm a little vesicle, but someday I'll be a big bulla. So that's, you know the diagnosis. So Zank Prep, first of all, has terrible sensitivity. Zank Prep is like a pap smear. It's swabbing cells looking at multinucleated giant cells. And from that point of view, it won't tell you the difference between herpes 1, herpes 2, or varicella. Shingles. They all have Zank Prep positive. You don't need to do a viral culture when you have a single episode. Viral culture is what you do to tell sensitivity for the possibility of acyclovir resistant. Herpes serology is always wrong. 95% of the population has an IgG, at least an IgG. PCR is the most accurate test, but not necessary. Now, acyclovir orally, because topical acyclovir is placebo. Topical acyclovir has no better efficacy than placebo. Primary syphilis is a genital lesion, genital lesion, heaped up, firm, edges, painless. VDRL and RPR is positive in 75%. And, if you, and dark field is the most accurate. If you're penicillin allergic, doxycycline, not desensitize. Secondary syphilis is all skin. I remember being a second year resident. I was rotating at a, the Durham Clinic at Columbia and it was called the Dermatology Syphilis Clinic. And one of the many times in my life that I have embarrassed myself, I walk in at the, uh, with the attending, and I'm on rotation, and I go, gee whiz, man, why is it called Dermatology Syphilis Clinic? I don't understand why it's Dermatology Syphilis Clinic. And he goes, well, because syphilis was predominantly presenting 
with skin manifestations because the primary syphilitic chancre will go away. And then they show up later with alopecia, with a rash, mucus patches, or condylomata alata, yeah, alata condylomata. And uh, you uh, have a diagnosis with your VDRL or RPR and one single intramuscular dose of penicillin because the majority of penicillin was diagnosed by dermatologists because shankers heal even without treatment. Shankers heal even without treatment. Tertiary syphilis, the multiple manifestations of them. Tertiary syphilis uh, was a disease that uh, was almost gone, you know, uh, almost gone. Very, it had become extraordinarily rare because syphilis, one of the great public health successes, chased down the partners. Meningovascular basically means a vasculitis. It'll show you a stroke in a young person. Uh, you exclude lupus. You exclude things like Wegener's, now glandulomatosis, polyangiitis. You exclude vasculitis. And why is a young person having a stroke? Tabies is a posterior column problems, uh, spinal cord problems, and you lose the position of your vibratory sense in the posterior column, like B12 deficiency. General paresis is a fancy word for your brain shrivels. Your brain shrivels. The G-men, the government men, did not get Al Capone. Tertiary syphilis got Al Capone. He died in, uh, uh, too late for his brain to be saved by penicillin with a brain the size of a walnut. And Argyle Robertson pupil, these are old, and this is not one of the things that you need to do review courses for to see the pupils that react to accommodation but not to light. The moral story for all of these forms of neurosyphilis, the most accurate test for all of them, for most accurate test for neurosyphilis, is a CSF FTA. So it's the opposite in cerebrospinal fluid. In the blood, first you do the VDRL or RPR, and the FTA confirms it. But inside CSF, FTA is 99% sensitive. Now, whichever form of tertiary syphilis it is, the patient needs intravenous penicillin. And if the person is penicillin allergic, really penicillin allergic, all of these forms of tercyphilis needs desensitization. The most sensitive test for CSF, this is a very hard question by the way because most people, what they see done is a VDRL and RPR. Second, a VDRL and RPR are both in the same answer. Uh, the choices both have to be wrong because it's impossible to choose between them. Dark field is for primary syphilis. There is no quote unquote stain for any of them, and spirochetes don't culture. In CSF, FTA has a 99% sensitivity. Now, FTA can leak in from the blood into the CSF, but when you're check looking for neurosyphilis, you want sensitivity, meaning to exclude the disease. When do you get a false positive VDRL or RPR? Oh, a bunch of things, a bunch of things. Uh, I got other illness. I have other infections. Uh, certainly lupus, lupus, because the anti-cardio lipin antibody, uh, the, the reagent in VDRL is a cardiolipin. So the anti-cardio lipins cross-react. So just getting older, injection drug use, countercurrent illnesses and infections, all cause false positive VDRLs and RPRs. Why is malaria? Because it does. So antiphospholipid syndromes, because the VDRL is a type of phospholipid, so the antibody is reacting against the reagent in the lab test. And then chronic infections like endocarditis is a classic. Now the thing about false positives is that almost all false positives happen at low titers. 101, 102, 104, low, mild, real syphilis, 1 to 64, 128, 256, 512, uh, 512. Real syphilis has serious titers. Real syphilis is not 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 4. Real syphilis is high titers. The lower the syphilis titer, the more likely it is to be either a false positive. The lower the titer, the more likely it is to be either a false positive or previously treated. Oh, you mean like it used to be 1 to 256 or 512, and I got treated, and now it's 1 to 2, 1 to 4? Yep. Yep. Because it can stay around for the rest of your life. The lower the titer, the more likely it is to be either a false positive or 
previous treatment. Now, how would I know? How would I know? One, on a practical level, we call the health department and say, yo, does this person have a history of treatment? But the other way to tell is the FTA. You see, if you have a titer of one to eight, but the FTA is negative, it's a false, ne it's a false positive, false positive VRL. The FTA will tell you, primary and secondary syphilis get one single, one shot for secondary syphilis. If it's with the rash, if it's with the rash, if you have what we call late latent, which is just syphilis, that's just a positive serology, you're on a screening test. Uh, you went, you have uh, gonorrhea, you should get tested for chlamydia. You have chlamydia, you should get tested for syphilis and gonorrhea. You're HIV positive, you should get tested for syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And when you got one STD, you should test for the others. So if you have chlamydia, you should get tested for gonorrhea and for syphilis. And the other way around. If you have syphilis, you should get tested for, for chlamydia and gonorrhea. If it's just a rash, one single shot of penicillin. Penicillin allergic is doxycycline. Tertiary syphilis would need to be desensitized. Tertiary syphilis and pregnancy. Now, I give you a shot of penicillin. So you get that point about the, the when you see the three shots of penicillin? Three shots of penicillin is not when you have a rash, alopecia areata, mucus patches, condyloma lata. Those three shots of intramuscular penicillin, so it's called late latent. You have no symptoms, but you've got positive serology at a high titer. That's the multiple, that's the multiple shots. I gave you those shots and you got worse. You got a fever, you got aches and pains and myalgias. It is Jarish Herxheimer, which is just the cells dying and releasing pyrogens, which you treat with antipyretics. You just treat with prostaglandin inhibitors. Jarish Herxheimer. Most of you are not going to see it. Now, genital warts. These are a few of my favorite things, the gift that keeps on giving. What can you do to do primary prevention of genital warts? Primary prevention? I don't know. Condoms? Not have sex? Uh, just talk dirty? Uh, just uh, sex with the refrigerator door, eating? No, there actually is something. Come on, you know. Come on, Pookie. The HPV vaccine. The HPV vaccine has an official indication not just to prevent um, cervical cancer, it has an indication to prevent genital warts. As a matter of fact, the HPV vaccine is easier to approve based on this because it's easier to demonstrate that it prevents genital warts. Now, genital warts, when they occur, are not diagnosed by a stain or a smear or a culture or a biopsy or serology or HPV uh, IgMs or aerial photography, satellite imagery. Genital warts are, I see a wart, like any wart, like molluscum contagiosum, I see a wart. And then just like any kind of wart or molluscum contagiosum, you treat by removing. Oh, your fingernails are long. Let's get a manicure pedicure. And let's cut them off, uh, file them off, liquid nitrogen off them and freeze them. Surgery for really big ones, because sometimes they're really like big cauliflower. Laser them off or melt them off with pedophilin or trichloroacetic acid. Melts them off. What's good about this is some of this can be uh, patient administers these melty things. Or you can give that stuff that I said that also gets rid of basal cell cancer and actinic keratosis. Actinic, action, the rays of the sun, the rays of the sun. Actinic keratosis wants to become squamous cell cancer. Imiquimod uh, stimulates your immune system to slough off bad cells. Condylomata cuminata, molluscum contagiosum, actinic keratosis before they go on and become squamous cell carcinoma, and some basal cell cancers sloughs it off. Imiquimod, I love that drug. 35, 30 years it's out, go learn it. Pediculosis and scabies. Pediculosis and scabies, which are bigger? Scabies are small like a baby. A scabie baby. A scabie baby dig and poops, digs. Crabs are on the surface 
Like at the beach, they're on the surface. They're found in big hair-bearing areas. They're in your axilla, they're in your groin. They cause itching, you can just see them. You don't have to scrape them out. Cramps, also known as pediculosis, are diagnosed by actually looking into hair-bearing areas and permethrin. Now, you can use lindane, and you can use lindane for crabs, and you can use lindane for scabies. The problem with lindane is it has more toxicity. Because you know what happens when people find out that they got crabs and scabies? They pour on the antidote. And it can get absorbed through the skin, particularly in children, cause lindane can cause lindane seizures. Scabies, baby, scrape it. Crabs, two millimeters, scabies, half a millimeter. They dig and they burrow and they dig and they burrow and you scrape and you magnify them. That's why they're itchy, because what you're having is a kind of a contact dermatitis to scaby poop dug under your skin. Same answer, permethrin or lindane. Now, sometimes we have what's called crusted scabies. Norwegian, I don't know, are Norwegians all crusty? Get me a sardine, Greta. Helga, fetch me boat. <laughs> I don't know, I'm making this up. But it is, it's called Norwegian scabies, and it happens in immunocompromised people. Immunocompromised people can get overwhelming because the immune system monitors scabies. You see, a crab is just like having rats in your backyard. They're on the surface. You're not really immunocompromised. But scabies, if you have immune deficits, if you have HIV, the immune system monitors that scabies because it's digging in you. Remember I said the itching around the nipples too? is because it's a, a, re, a reaction to scabies stool. So when you have overwhelming crusted scabies, also known as Norwegian crusted scabies, often with immune defects, we use an oral medication called ivermectin. Ivermectin is an anti-tropical disease type medication. Ivermectin, not used too much, and it will be in some of the tropical uh, and uh, disease section that we use for various forms of things um, uh, that happen not in the United States. So widespread crusted scabies. Oh. Do you feel clean? Do you feel like you want to avoid urine, gentlemen, for your nucleic acid test? Do you feel like doing a selfie? There's no reason for anybody to have chlamydia and gonorrhea. We could wipe it out tomorrow by just simply peeing into a cup, taking a... Your birthday's coming up, did you say? Did you say your birthday's coming up? Oh my goodness. Well, I should get him something. What should we get him? I mean, what do you get for the man who has everything? Ceftrioxone and azithromycin. I have to write, like I do, policy.